Okay, hey guys, welcome back to another video. Okay, we're back again, okay, once again with part 5, okay, of H2 Geography, okay, um, our content series which is covering on El Nino for today's lesson. Okay, so what is El Nino and why are we gonna study El Nino for, okay? Basically, I realize that a lot of students tend to get very confused, okay, as to what El Nino is, okay, as well as how, how does it work, okay, and then what's the difference between El Nino and Walker Circulation. Okay, so before we even start, okay, please, Go ahead and recap on walker circulation if you need to, okay, because walker circulation is a normal situation that occurs in the Pacific Ocean. So that is very important as a kickstarter to actually understanding what El Nino is. Okay, so let's just go straight in. Okay, firstly, what is El Nino? Alright, so basically El Nino is a phenomenon that takes place once in a while in December. Okay, take note of December in the Pacific Ocean when the walker circulation breaks down. Okay, so like what I just said, okay, your walker circulation is basically the normal situation that happens every single day, every single month in the Pacific Ocean. Okay, and if you remember, it is basically the easterly trade winds, okay, which brings warm water towards which side, go and recap all those. Okay, so I want to focus on El Nino, okay, so El Nino is basically an unusual situation. What does that mean? It means that it doesn't always happen. Uh. Okay, so recap, this is how your Pacific Ocean looks like. We are basically focusing on Australia and South America in this case. Okay, so easterly trade winds always blows from the east to the west, which means that in this case of El Nino, there is the shutting off. Okay, we you see your easterly trade winds, they start to shut down. Okay, and they start to decline and weaken, they get very limp. And as a result, as a result of these easterly trade winds breaking down weapons, it basically reverses the whole process whereby now the winds are blowing from the west to the east, which is from Australia to um, Chile or Peru, those countries um, in the South America uh, continent or South America region. Okay, so the warm water basically moves across the Pacific Ocean, shutting down the Peruvian current, which, if you remember, was actually a deep, cold, a very nutrient uh, rich ocean uh, current. Okay, and as a result, this produces a warm current. This warm current is called El Nino. Alright, so what are the pressure changes which actually occur? Alright, so high pressure which usually forms over the cold ocean, okay, is now actually replaced by low pressure over the warmer ocean. Okay, so now the, basically what actually happens is that the ocean becomes very warm because of the shutting down of the um, Peruvian current. Okay, so as a result, like we have discussed before, right, high pressure is low temperature. Low pressure is high temperature. It's always the opposite. So in this case, with a warmer ocean, naturally, it will be a region of lower pressure created instead. And this can actually occur 6 to 10 degrees Celsius above the normal temperature. Okay, so colder ocean water at the Western Pacific is actually a region of higher pressure uh, as a result. And so if you remember the Western Pacific, we're basically looking at the um, western side of the Pacific Ocean, which is, which is basically Australia. Okay, and this will actually form a region of high pressure, which means that it is also a region of low temperature, which means that it's actually very, very cold, very, very dry during this period of El Nino in Australia. Okay, on the other hand, there will actually be warmer ocean water at the eastern Pacific instead. And this will actually form a very region, uh, not a very region, sorry, see my bad, a, a region of actually lower pressure. And that will mean higher temperatures as well as uh, greater uh, susceptibility to, to, let's say, rain, um, flooding, all of these kind of things which can actually be brought about as this region of low pressure is formed. Okay, so if you look at it, like what I just mentioned, okay, as a result of El Nino, what actually happens is that there will be very, very heavy rainfall, usually on the arid coastline of Eastern Pacific of Peru, and this results in heavy flooding, okay, so this part will link it to later on what you may study, okay, for the, for the J1s, okay, you will study this thing about uh, big soil, Okay, big soil as well as your porosity, as well as your permeability of the of the flooring um, of your ground. So usually when, when a certain location is dry for long periods of time, the ground will actually get extremely, extremely, extremely hard, right? And it actually causes um, the permeability to, to be decreased, right? And as a result, when there's very, very sudden rainfall, the floor actually cannot, in a sense, absorb, and the water cannot actually permeate through the ground and this results in a high amount of surface runoff which leads to heavy flooding. Okay, likewise the opposite will occur for the western pacific, let's say countries such as Indonesia, whereby what actually happens is that there will be a lot of droughts because suddenly the temperature has dropped, uh, sorry the pressure has dropped to become so low but at the same time 
what actually happens is that the the um temperature has actually increased to become so high. Alright, so as a result this will create droughts, okay? Things like crops, uh your vegetables all cannot grow properly anymore as a result of this. Okay, so to give you a visual aid, okay, what actually happens during the El Nino? Okay, let's start from Australia, okay? We start from the the western Pacific side of the ocean. You notice that okay, the warm surface currents actually reverse. Alright, and this warm surface currents reversing is actually a result of the trade winds reversing direction. So you notice that when the winds change direction, the warm surface currents will actually also change. So it's kind of like in a sense mimicking each other. Okay, but always trade winds come first. Okay, because remember, our easterly winds actually shut down at first. Hence, the surface currents will actually reverse instead. So this cold upwelling, which is basically your periven current down here, okay, will actually start to shut off. It will die down and there will be no more. So as a result, the warm water will actually move towards South America and actually pile up over here. Okay, so once it piles up here, the warm water will actually cause this region of um of of actually very high in a sense, uh, high high pressure for the area, right? Low low sorry low pressure. So as well as low pressure, there will actually be warm rising air, and this will actually bring about your thunderstorms and your floods. On the other hand, for Australia, the dry sinking air will cause droughts. So you know, this is actually very very simple, and you know it's very very simple. The effects are simply the opposite compared to your water circulation. And the main idea that you need to understand is that your trade winds actually reverse direction. So originally it was easterly trade winds. So easterly, what comes first is the easterly, right? So it goes from the east to the west. Now, when you reverse direction, it goes from the west to the east. So it's very, very simple. Okay, so that's really basically about all you need to know for, uh, you know, okay, if we look at your exam requirements now, okay, Honestly, it's actually very simple. Okay, in the exam, El Nino usually comes out in conjunction with the Walker circulation. This was mentioned in the previous video. Go ahead and watch it. Okay, and they tend to either be in 12 marks essay questions or in data response, usually based on experience. I've seen most papers come out in DRQ instead. Okay, so in the case of DRQ, basically they give you data. So they'll show you, for example, a diagram like this or possibly uh, actually like a temperature diagram. What you need to do is basically very simply just describe how the El Nino works, okay, explain it and possibly evaluate the impacts. Okay, so the um okay, the next video may show some examples of this. I'll, I'll try and tr uh, churn it out. If I can't then um go ahead and just search online. Okay, but basically for this kind of questions, when I ask you to describe the pattern of El Nino, you just need to tell me that the trade winds have actually shut down. Okay, as a result, the winds will actually move from the west to the east instead of the usual easterly trade winds. So something very simple, okay, just move from direction, which direction to which direction, and then give me the continents, or at least give me the countries which may be affected. For example, Indonesia may be affected, or let's say Chile and Peru may be affected by heavier rainfall, um, flooding, and then for Indonesia, they may be affected by extremely, extremely high temperatures or droughts. Okay, so the key concepts to include Okay, very simply, first one, always trade winds. Okay, without a doubt, trade winds are extremely important. You need to mention your easterly trade winds. Secondly, your piling of warm water. On which side? Of course, it's at the um, eastern side, which is basically your Chile or Peru. Okay, then your Peruvian current, you need to mention how it shuts down. Okay, then your active convection activity, this one is normal, high and low pressure. It comes together with high temp and low temp. Okay, Eastern Pacific and Western Pacific. So this one is basically I'm asking for your country specific locations. And then lastly, your dry weather versus your wet weather. So is it flooding or are they going to have jobs? Okay, so really that's all we need to know for, you know, okay, it's a very, very simple concept. Just need to study it together with your normal circulation, not normal circulation, your normal situation, which is your walker circulation. And then it should really be a piece of cake. It shouldn't be, be too hard to handle. Okay, so if not, I think that's really all you need to know for, you know, Okay, next videos or, 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 or next few videos, I'll try and cover a few exam questions. Okay, so um, go ahead and, and stay tuned and then um, you go ahead and subscribe if you feel that all these lessons have been helpful for you. And let me know as well what are the certain uh, questions or, or either that topics that you need help with. Okay, and I'll try my best to go through them um, with you guys as soon as possible. Okay, if not, 
Till then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.